Good morning. We are making chili in the crock pot today. Now this is one that you can put off until later in the day and cook in your Dutch oven instead. Uh, but I find that it tastes better when you slow cook it all day long. And there are a couple of options, a couple of variations. If you're gonna cook it in your Dutch oven, I want you to half all the ingredients. If you're gonna cook it all day, do as I do. Uh, we are using fresh green peppers and fresh onions. Uh, one onion, two green peppers. And you can either cook them with your ground beef, which I, I'm about to do, or you can throw them in fresh and let them cook all day in the crock pot. Uh, I'm gonna pre-cook them with the meat and then throw them into the crock pot. We are also using two cans of dark red kidney beans, which we will rinse. Two cans of diced tomatoes, we will not drain them. A 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Uh, four cloves of garlic. Definitely use fresh garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, use four teaspoons of garlic powder. We will also be using uh, about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, freshly ground, a teaspoon of basil, and then the chili powder is really where you can be um, as liberal or as conservative as you want to be. We tend to go towards the liberal side. Um, I have put as many as six tablespoons of chili powder in my chili, which is ooh, super hot. Um, I'll probably go towards two or three tablespoons. The average normal person will probably want two to three teaspoons. Um, so find, find your range, what's best for your family. Uh, and remember that when, when you're making spicy food, there are some things that you use to counterbalance. So, um, moving to Kentucky taught me that people out here put pasta in the chili to deaden the spice. Um, so that's something you can totally do. I think that's a little weird. That just doesn't work for me. Um, but you can totally do that. We tend to put cheese in our chili. Like after we've made our bowls, we'll put um, either mild or sharp cheddar or a Mexican blend of cheese into our chili. We usually top it with either oyster or saltine crackers. Um, some people like to put sour cream, which will also deaden some of that spice if it's too spicy for you. I don't like sour cream, so I don't do that, but people do it. Um, I often serve it with cornbread. Uh, the sweetness of bread in general will help counteract the spicy of the chili powder. Mine's the five-year-old. Um, and then we usually give our kids glasses of milk to drink because again, that will help with the spice. Um, if, if you prefer spice and your child does not or whatever, um, those are some things that you can do to help kind of counteract that. So I'm gonna get started cooking. I already have two pounds of ground beef over here in my cast iron skillet waiting for me. And I'm going to add in, this is one whole chopped onion and two chopped green bell peppers. I will link my video on how to chop veggies so you can see what we're doing there. And while this is heating up, I'm going to start opening up my cans and dumping them into the crock pot. order for what ingredient goes in when. This is not one of those crock pot meals that you have to layer things and do it specifically. It's a dump and go. Um, and I'm a firm believer that chili is good in all seasons. It is not a one season meal. Yes, it's fantastic in cold weather, um, but it's also really good in hot weather. I don't think that chili is just a, a winter time recipe. Okay, so that's why tomatoes are my tomato sauce. My kidney beans have the pop tops. 
but I'm not gonna pop it all the way. Well, most of the way, because I want to use that lid to drain it. First we drain, and then we're gonna rinse. I'm just gonna fill that can up with some water and let it pour out. There's some pretty thick syrup in there. Yeah. I'm only gonna do that once because I'm gonna dump them in my colander too to get them a little bit more red. Because that syrup really sits at the bottom. I'm keeping an ear out for my skillet. Because once it starts cooking, it'll start sizzling. You can preheat your skillet while you are waiting or while you're chopping your veggies. I didn't do that because I had my meat in it. all that gunk down in there we don't want that we don't want that in our chili so I'm gonna rinse that off and I'm gonna let them sit there and drain while I take care of my skillet Now I recommend using lean ground beef because it's just healthier. But you do you. This is a fairly healthy recipe. Um, you get lots of veggies in it. You get your protein with the meat. It's actually Six grams of saturated fat, so um, the average person is allowed about 17 grams of saturated fat, and we get most of that in our dinner meals anyway, so that sounds about right. That's about a third of your daily intake. And then it is 33 grams of carbs, and that's from your veggies, because people forget that, that carbs are not just sugar, and diabetics don't just have to worry about sugar, they worry about all carbs. So that's, that's coming from your vegetables. And I would say primarily from the onions, but it's coming from all the vegetables. Yeah, and so I know beans are protein, but what else do beans often bring in? Um, they probably do have some carbs. Oh yeah, so a bunch of the carbs are coming from the kidney beans too. Oh really? Yeah. Actually, more of the carbs are coming from the kidney beans. Oh. I didn't expect that. I didn't either. I knew that they had some carbs, but I really only cooked them in this, so I forgot. Yeah, and hence the question is where my mind was. Yeah, no, that's a good question. But 33 grams of carbs, and that's um, per serving if you make eight servings. Um, so this says the Dutch oven version is about five cups, and so the crock pot version is doubled so that's like 10 cups and eight servings, 10 divided by eight is one and a quarter, right? I think I did that math right. <laughs> so about, about one and a quarter cups of chili will be about 33 grams of carbs. And that fits really well into my carb limit and will still allow me space for a couple of crackers and a handful of cheese. Um, you know, you obviously have your own carb limit if you are working within either a keto diet or a diabetic diet. You know, do what your your doctor or your dietitian has told you to do. If you're not worried about carbs, then just be happy you're having a nice light carb meal. Okay, 
while that's cooking, I'm gonna grab my four cloves of garlic because they're gonna get cooked in here with the meat. You can add them in right at the beginning of cooking, but I like to wait until the meat has started to brown some. No particular reason. So I'm just using my garlic press to press the garlic in. If you're using garlic powder, I would probably wait and not cook the garlic with the meat and veggies and just put it into your crock pot. I put it in whenever you put in the, the chili powder. Yeah, I would just add it with the rest of the seasonings if you're using um, dry garlic powder. I probably wouldn't use dried minced garlic in this um, just because it ends up being pretty big pieces of garlic. And I just, I prefer this. I prefer fresh. It tastes so much better. You want to cook this until the meat is browned. While that continues to cook, I'm gonna come back over to my crock pot and add the rest of my ingredients. I can see how some of the onions are getting translucent, but others are not. Yeah, because they're not ready. Yeah. Okay, so in go the kidney beans. And I'm gonna save my colander because I'm gonna drain my grease in, through this. freshly ground, which I'm going to need more of soon. Um, but you can do the kind that just comes in the container. And then a teaspoon of basil. Ooh, which I need more of that too. Again, ignore the five-year-old. I'm sure you can hear him screaming. He's fine. He's just grouchy. All right. Mondays are hard. Basil, add it to the grocery list. Yeah. All right, and then, like I said, the amount of chili powder you use is really up to you. We're gonna do three tablespoons. You might prefer three teaspoons. One, two, three. And a half. <laughs> so the chili in two parts. And then here. I'm gonna give the my crock pot ingredients a good stir. Oh. And I do already have this on low. Sorry about that. No, you're okay. You can't read my mind. Now I have a friend who puts a, a dash of chocolate and a dash of cinnamon in her chili. If you prefer a sweeter chili, it was, oh, it was delicious. Oh yeah. We actually were uh, at like a church thing and we asked people to vote on how they thought and that one definitely won most unique. Yes, um, it was really good. But it was gone. Like that, that night it was one of the many that were gone, I think. Yeah. Uh, this recipe is, like one we've had forever from this Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. Like it's, it, it was everybody's complete favorite, I will say, yeah, that this night. Is, this is a crowd favorite. It, it usually wins spiciest. Because so. like we said, we sometimes put lots of tablespoons. <laughs> yeah, lots of chili batter. Yeah. I don't know that we, I mean, and we could add um, the other types of peppers that we've added in. I've, I've made a chili that had habaneros and poblanos. Um, and that could just get added to the green pepper and 
Right, Th so. but this is a nice, simple recipe uh, for when you don't have a ton of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, that's not hot. All right, so my meat is all browned, and I'm not worried about my veggies being translucent. Oh, yeah. Because they're going to cook all day. Oops. I got it. You got it? Okay. Kind of a trick to, to uh, save the... Uh... Save the... Uh... Ah, there you go. <laughs> Um, the grease? Yeah, the grease and save or try to protect the drain, um, all kinds of stuff. It's a, just a good practice to do this. Yeah, so I just poured it into the can or as best as I could. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna dump this into my crock pot. All right, everything is now in my crock pot. I'm giving it another couple of good stirs to get it thoroughly incorporated. Slide it over so you can see it better. You can see my crock pot is good and full. This is one that will feed lots of people. Like I said, it makes about 10 cups of chili. So we will have it for leftovers. I like to use one night for regular chili, one night for like chili dogs. That's a good use of the leftover chili. All right. Okay, this is gonna cook for eight to 10 hours in the crock pot. When that time is over, all I have to do is spoon it into bowls and serve it. So, that's our chili recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to share it with a friend. Um, and also be sure to follow my blog where I have all kinds of fun meal planning and cooking tips. And we will see you later.